All right, Jackie, let me ask you a couple of questions about your own research uh, in the area of uh, strategic conversation and SOAR. Mm -hmm. uh, could you explain to us what these means sure. and uh, what you have done? Yeah, so um, let me start off with um, Jeff Weiner. He's the CEO of LinkedIn, and everybody's usually familiar with LinkedIn. And he said that the biggest gap that employers have to deal with is how to make sure their employees know how to lead, they know how to work in teams, and they know how to communicate. And so he said the boot camps of the future are boot camps that teach you how to have conversations. So when I think about um, strategic conversations, that's when you and I are having a conversation to fuel productivity, engagement, and profitability in the organization. And a framework that came out of my research is called SOAR. And it uses appreciative inquiry as its operating model that um, we've talked a lot about um, how important it is to use lots of tools such as Porter's Five Forces, the SWOT. When it comes to having to create a strategy to move the organization forward, or maybe it's a strategy to divest, you have to leverage your existing strengths. And then think about the opportunities, the innovations, the ideas, and bring it into the aspirations of your stakeholders. And your stakeholders are your employees. Your stakeholders are your shareholders, your customers, even the communities we talked about earlier that um, businesses reside in. So when we're looking at strengths, opportunities, and aspirations of result, you look at results. And results have to be very meaningful and measurable. And what SOAR encourages you to do is not the traditional top-down strategic planning with the board and senior management, but are you willing to invite in, let's talk about your employees. What if we involve people from the customer call center or people on the manufacturing um, floor? Can we bring in those employees that are sometimes the closest to your suppliers and the customers? And that is the essence of SOAR, is you and I having a strategic conversation that's going to really inspire innovation and engagement. Excellent. Uh, two questions come to my mind. Uh, one is, could you define for us what SOAR stands for? So the S of SOAR stands for strengths. And strengths are, what are we really great at? Okay. And, and how we can create dynamic capabilities that are better than our competitors. Opportunities are... What are the possibilities, the innovations out there that we can grow the organization? Sometimes an innovation is a new product, a new market, or it's a new process um, or a new system. Mm -hmm. um, aspirations is you have to look across not just your shareholders, we talked about the stakeholders, right. but what are the aspirations of our customers, our employees? Um, what do we as an organization, as a team care? What do we care really deeply about? in devising strategies. And then of course, at the end of the day, you have to have results, and that's the R, is um, meaningful and measurable results. Uh, the second question is, uh, conventionally, a lot of us uh, deal with SWOT analysis. Mm -hmm. And I know you introduced uh, SOAR and you wrote a book about it. Uh, why did you come with that idea? What do you think SOAR is uh, better suits uh, some companies than uh, SWOT analysis? So I, I'll be clear that um, if you think of the history, SWOT came in the 1950s. And SWOT is an analytical tool to look at strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So when you're done with that analytical tool, however you want to use it, you got to create a strategy. Would you want to create a strategy based on your weaknesses and threats? No. No. So what you'd want to do is figure out your strengths configuration and bring in those people from the system that are dealing with your customers and suppliers daily so what SOAR does is SOAR didn't come out until after the stakeholder approach, probably in the year 2000, and SOAR says let's engage the right people in the room to look at the strengths and the opportunities. People sometimes get really mired down into weaknesses and threats and they become paralyzed um, and the conversation becomes draining. And we pay attention uh, naturally to weaknesses and threats and what, what, what is going wrong in society. And looking to, at weaknesses and saying, where can we better develop ourselves? What are we already good at? And then it talks about, we talked about the value chain. How do you maybe acquire a strength or do you build it in-house? So SOAR is very um, of the now and to move the organization forward with the best intentions possible. Very good. Uh, do you think SOAR applies to all companies? 
Or do you have a certain type of companies in mind that SOAR works better for them than other companies? So SOAR has been around since 2000. It's on every continent except Antarctica. And I have found that the leadership that's willing to engage their employees into a conversation, it can be there. So it's been at for-profit, non-profit, it's been used in, in the government. I'm working with a government organization right now. You're an engineer, you said? Yes. We're bringing, um, how do you bring 1,500 engineers together to create a strategy around collaboration? And we're piloting a program with about 150 engineers to come up with, if we can get these engineers, 18 capabilities in different parts of this organization, how do we bring them together to collaborate so they're building the best product possible. Um, so it, it works across to any industry, anywhere, anytime. And if you're really bold and you do it with your employees, you might think about bringing suppliers into the conversation, even customers into the conversation. So you have like a whole system representation of the strategy and not just what typically the top leaders think or the board or what the re industry reports are telling, but you're really having strategic conversations. That's great. Uh, Jackie, could you please share with us uh, one or two stories about application of SOAR in industries? Sure. Um, probably one of my earliest stories involved a manufacturing plant in the Midwest part of Michigan. It was a holding company that was into, as you described, um, un diverse, un diverse unrelated, diversity. unrelated diversification. And they were going to close this plant down. So my job was to come up with a strategy of how to shut the plant down. And they assured me that when I got to this town that people had three years until they were gonna lose their jobs. So they weren't gonna close the plant overnight. So my job was to work with this plant of how we would shut it down. And when I, um, I agreed to do it, and when I walked in there, um, they were not very happy. I don't think it was with me. I think it's because they knew we had to spend two days together to come up with a strategy of how to shut the plant down. And maybe you would lose your job in three years. I might lose mine within the first year. And um, as I began to explain the process and that we'd be using the SOAR framework, I asked a what if question. This is the innovation question. I said, what if we created a revitalization list and that if we could agree in this room, and we probably had 120 people at this um, strategy session, that if within 18 months, if we couldn't bring the, pro the plant to a break even, we'd start to phase our jobs out. And there was a lot of pushback because they said, we have to come up with a strategy to lose our jobs within three years and shut the plant down. And I just said, but what if we agreed, we've got three years here to really look into the strengths what if the opportunity here is to put us on a revitalization list? And if we can't bring the plant to break even, then we're all going to lose our jobs still. We'll just lose them in two years instead of three years. And it took a couple of hours to get them to feel that this was a possibility. And we decided to do that. And even though the holding company never had a revitalization list, we put a plan together that the end game, remember we talked to end game, they were still gonna lose their jobs in three years, but we kind of changed the innovation. So they created a strategy, they created a plan to get the plant to break even. And if they couldn't, they would lose their jobs. This was 10 years ago and the, the plants never closed down. Excellent. That's probably so my, one of my favorite stories very is, good. is that. And I think the other story is, um, when I think of the nonprofit sector, um, there was a literacy program that, you know, you wish people would come to you to come up with a strategy when things are going great, but it was a literacy organization that was gonna lose their funding, and they had to come up with an innovative way to go out to new funding sources because they dealt with literacy. And again, when you can bring people into a room, the ones that um, are working with your customers and your clientele and let them have a part of the strategy, they're the closest to the customers, and they came up with new and innovative ways to have funding to teach literacy in their county that expanded throughout the state. That's great. Uh, it's a challenge, uh, definitely, to, uh, to organize around so many people and, and when you have a goal. Uh, I know that you do a lot of research on this subject. Uh, could you share with us uh, you know, some part of your research on SOAR? 
Yes. Um, so I, SOAR is fortunate enough to have something like the Gallup poll the industry. So there's a lot of research out there through the Center of Positive Organizations, which is housed at the University of Michigan through the Gallup poll, that they, their research shows that if you focus on strengths, your productivity will increase 1.5 times higher. The most innovative companies are companies that are willing to bring employees and even customers together and do rapid prototyping and then build that product to the market. So there's a lot of research out there. We're fortunate at Lawrence Tech University, we probably had 15 doctoral students actually do empirical research on SOAR in various different industries. And um, we've also been able to find out that other universities and other students th throughout the world are looking at SOAR like Boeing Corporation. So th we're fortunate that there's a lot of research done in this area. Thank you so much, Jackie. I have one last question, which was not uh, part of this conversation. I know you wrote a book recently about conversation worth having. Could you briefly talk about that book and uh, emphasize on the importance of it? Again, I think you touched on it uh, at the beginning, but uh, it's um, good to, to know more about it. Yeah, um, I'd say after 20 years of working in this field that the success of an organization is really dependent on our relationships and our relationships evolve through what you what you think, what you say, and what you do. So everything is very relational. And if we can bring people together and take what's wrong and say, well, what would be right? And we can teach people how to reframe things and how to ask generative questions. So generative questions are new knowledge, new innovations. The book's title is actually Conversations Worth Having, Using Appreciative Inquiry to Feel Productive and Meaningful Engagement. And I think when you go to work every day, that that's what you want. You want meaningful engagement, productivity, and the research shows that it will improve your performance, our performance, and the whole organization's performance. Thank you very so much. So your words do matter. Yes, of course.